Hey, this is Lucas. I wanted to uh, go over a little bit of a uh, well, shop tip, really, on this. It uh, has, has to do with this drill press. It's a, it's a great Rockwell Delta drill press, probably from the oh, early 50s, I'm guessing, maybe uh, maybe through the late 50s, somewhere in there. It's a really nice machine. But one thing I discovered when I was putting it back together, uh, luckily it's got a three-phase motor, which I like. As you all know, I, I like these with a variable frequency drive. And of course it's got step pulleys, so the step pulley is the one off the motor, it goes right here. When I reassembled this, uh, this, this motor had been balanced at the factory back in the day. And, uh, ran pretty well, I did find a, the fan was a little cockeyed in there, I had to straighten that out. But uh, once I get that straightened out, the, the motor runs, spools up real nice. Uh, I wouldn't want to do it right now, I got this key in here, and uh, it's really immaterial to the discussion. So. It would spool up real nice and it was in balance. The problem came in when I put this pulley on. And uh, the pulley, I think it had been balanced. There's actually a little spot here where they take they, uh, took off some material. It's on the, the side that I found to be heavy. So uh, I'll tell you how I discovered that and then what I did about it. So I found that uh, you know, the, the side with the, the key on it is the heavy side. And it seems like it was way heavier than than what the initial uh, balance mark would have indicated. So anyway, what I ended up doing is I uh, took some, I, I tried to use uh, wheel weights, but they're all steel now, or some material's got a adhesive backing on it, which is pretty good, but it's not conformable, and uh, I mean, they used to use lead. So, casting some of my lead hammers at the end of the cast, I wanted a convenient way of uh, putting lead back into my crucible for melting. So what I did is I just took and uh, dropped the lead with a ladle onto my steel welding table and I came up with these nice little, I don't know, chocolate chips I suppose you'd call them. They're nice thickness, they're only about maybe a, maybe a little over an eighth of an inch thick and uh, it's ideal because you can cut them with the scissors. So uh, here's here's uh, an example, so here's that piece and uh, just uh, take a pair of scissors. You can certainly use a tin snips, but the uh, scissors actually worked okay. So once I cut these into a strip, like so, then I took a piece of duct tape and I duct taped a piece onto the pulley in different spots and uh, ran up the speed with the VFD until I found it vibrating. And then uh, could kind of quantify the imbalance that way. It's not precise, of course. It's definitely a subjective process, but uh, I, I found, you know, weighting this side uh, helped the vibration a lot. And then a little later I ended up kind of counterbalancing that a little bit down here. Now, uh, dynamic balancing is dependent on a couple of things, but uh, one of them is not only the position and the weight distribution around the perimeter, but then along the axis. So it's possible that this is a, you know, a dynamic balancing problem, even though this is a relatively you know narrow pulley, it's fairly lightweight. It's just ink casting, uh, die casting. But anyhow, this ended up balancing out fairly well. I, I can run it almost up to full speed, synchronous speed on the three phase motor, and uh, with very little vibration. Once I hit synchronous speed, it it does complain a little bit, but it's it's pretty good. So that's a way of uh, balancing your uh, you know your your system. This this pulley had a, a lot more extensive uh, indication of more extensive balancing. This is a much bigger pulley and it would be a bigger problem for the for the machine if it was out of balance. And uh, maybe we can show that. Let's see if we can take a look here. So you can see the uh, all the uh, balance indicators here on this on this pulley. Interestingly, it does not look like the had to distribute the, the balancing from top to bottom or along the axis of the pulley. It's just on that one side. So this does not seem to be too much of an issue when I when I put both pulleys on on the belt. Uh, it does rattle some, uh, maybe a little bit more with that uh, driven pulley uh, in the system, but not a whole lot. So I think it's pretty well balanced, and I think this was the main cause of the imbalance. One thing I forgot to mention, so uh, I used duct tape to distribute the weights temporarily and then I used, uh, it's just a goop, it's a, you know, a clear adhesive and I, uh, I gooped 
them in place. Let it dry overnight. And it worked, uh, seems to work really well. It's it's tough. It's a little bit flexible. And it doesn't seem to be moving. I also had to make sure that this weight was not in the way of this uh, this hole for the uh, access to the set screw. All right. All right. Hey, this is Lucas signing off.